And now to the other big meeting that's coming up this week. It's turning out to be the week of icebreakers and peace talks, we can tell you. The meeting between the two Korean leaders at the DMZ or the demilitarized zone will be historic in every sense of the word. The word, especially the U.S., will be keeping a close eye on the outcome of the talks which may decide the future of North Korea's nuclear missile program. Pyongyang for a long time has maintained that its nuclear arsenal, which it calls a powerful treasured sword for defending peace, is an insurance policy for future generations. Kim Jong-un has said that the nuclear weapons of his country are not a bargaining chip. But just days before these talks, he has suspended nuclear tests. He has also pledged to neither use nor proliferate nuclear weapons unless faced with a nuclear threat. In response, Seoul has halted the broadcast of propaganda messages and Korean pop songs across the border with North Korea. Experts call Kim's stance a replay of an old Korean tactic, trying to confuse opposition with dramatic gestures in order to win concessions without ever intending to give up nuclear weapons. The talks may just give him a political cover for negotiating reductions in his arsenal. If the Korean leaders are unable to reach an agreement, then it is most likely to cast a shadow of doubt over the Kim Jong-un meeting with U.S. President Donald Trump, which is scheduled to take place sometime in May or possibly in the month of June. So while Kim's ultimate motive remains unclear, his country is facing major sanctions which have crippled North Korea's economy. Kim has announced plans to open special economic zones, hoping to attract foreign investment, which cannot happen as long as he remains isolated from the rest of the world. And yet he says the nuclear weapons are, a, are an insurance policy. He will make history on Friday, becoming the first North Korean leader to set foot in South Korea. This will be the first in six decades. He will meet South Korean President Moon Jae-in for the third inter-Korean summit. And with barely days to go for what promises to be one of the most watched events internationally, Vion's Ramesh Ramachandran traveled to the demilitarized zone between the two Koreas to get you this special report. The inter-Korean summit has attracted worldwide attention like no other. Journalists from the Americas, Europe and the Indo-Pacific have descended on Seoul to cover Friday's summit between Moon Jae-in and Kim Jong-un. Their destination? The demilitarized zone, a legacy of the Cold War, that divided the Korean nation along the 38th parallel into North and South. Seoul has all the hallmarks of a thriving metropolis, complete with skyscrapers and glitzy malls. Soon, the urban landscape gives way to rugged terrain, and after a 90-minute bus ride, barbed wire fences, military vehicles, observation posts and barricades come into sight, suggesting that one was entering a high-security area. A tank announces the location, Joint Security Area, which is administered by the United Nations. The flags of three countries line the road here, South Korea, the United Nations and the United States. Clearly, it is more than a bilateral dispute between the North and South. The United States is a signatory to the 1953 armistice, which ended the Korean War. So any resolution of the crisis on the Korean Peninsula will need three-way talks, bringing together South and North Korea and the United States. A grand bargain would not be an exaggeration for describing the challenge at hand. We are escorted into the briefing hall inside the demilitarized zone under the watchful eyes of armed guards. And from there, aboard United Nations vehicles to reach the village of Taesong Dong, close to the border with North Korea. South Korean soldiers in blue, wearing dark sunglasses, take over. First on the itinerary is an elementary school the only one of its kind inside the demilitarized zone. But for the children here, the initials DMZ stand for Dream Making Zone. I'm coming to you from uh, the Tesong Dong Elementary School here in one of the villages closest to the border with North Korea. This falls inside the demilitarized zone or DMZ. Uh, and especially the Joint Security Area, which is uh, governed uh, by the United Nations. 
And this school is, has an interesting feature in the sense that uh, most of the students who study here live and work inside the DMZ, the village of Tesong Dong. Some of the other children come from n neighboring towns, but majority of them live and work inside the DMZ. Now, in this village, Tesong Dong, there are about 200 uh, people living here, of which about 50 are households. And the unique characteristic of this village is that uh, they, are, they pay no federal taxes, they you know, they're, they're agriculturists, they are given land on lease by the government, and uh, they, that's how they make a living out of here. But the school is important because the children who pass out of the school end up studying in this middle school and higher secondary school in adjoining towns and cities. The principal says the UN regulations cap the number of students at 35, eight of whom live inside the DMZ. There are 10 teachers in all. Asked if threat of hostilities at the border with North Korea make him nervous, the principal says no. The ever-watchful South Korean soldiers rebuff all attempts to strike a conversation with the principal. But a younger teacher volunteers. Where do you live and how long have you been teaching here in this school? Uh, about two months. <laughs> During about two months. So did you volunteer to come here or uh, were you sent here? I'm volunteer. I'm volunteer here. And uh, why did you volunteer? <laughs> uh, I I want to uh, have a experience here, uh, so I volunteer. And how long do you intend to teach here? Uh, I I have been a teacher about ten years. Yeah. So how many more months or years do you see yourself teaching in this elementary school in Tesongdong? Uh, Tesongdong, I, I, I teach here at Tesongdong Elementary School about uh, a little, uh, two months, two months. So. No, and how long will you be teaching here? Uh, three years. Yeah. The South Korean soldiers in blue intervene once again, saying it is time to move on. Outside, a South Korean official, a lady accompanying the journalists, instructs the Weon team to stop recording. Here in the demilitarized zone, this area which I, where I'm standing right, right now is an elementary school in Tesongdong village, closest to the boundary with North Korea. And another soldier cautions against filming. The heavy military presence ensures that none of the families living in the village venture to speak to media. Houses such as these dot the Tesong Dong village in the demilitarized zone. There are about 50 such households in the DMZ and they've been given land to till. Each family gets about 17 acres of land, which is higher than the annual average of the average South Korean family. Uh, and they earn an average income of $80,000 per year, which is again substantially higher than the average annual income of any ordinary South Korean. Well, I'm standing right close to the edge of the border with North Korea, and you can see those buildings. Are all the growth? We don't have time. Again, the Vion team is stopped from filming from where the border with North Korea can be seen on the horizon. Soon, the North Korean side of the border comes into full view. I'm Ramesh Ramachandran and you're watching these exclusive visuals for the first time here on Indian television. We are bringing you the latest news from the demilitarized zone that separates North Korea from South Korea. And here we are in Tesongdong village, right at the border with North Korea. As you can see, the North Korean flag waving uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the background there with the blue and green houses on the other side of the fence, so to speak, inside North Korea. And today being a Tuesday afternoon, it's relatively quiet here because there are no loudspeakers blaring Korean propaganda into North Korea. No K-pop music, no propaganda news blaring from the loudspeakers here on this side of the border in South Korea. And this in anticipation of uh, laying the groundwork for the meeting between Kim, Kim Jong-un of North Korea and Moon Jae-in of South Korea here in Panmunjom village close by on the 27th of this month for the third inter-Korean summit. The loudspeakers have an interesting history. South Korean officials say in 1962, North Korea first resorted to loudspeakers for transmitting propaganda across the border into South Korea. 
South Korea followed suit one year later. Since then, they've been switched off and on, depending on the state of relations between Pyongyang and Seoul. In 2004, South Korea unilaterally stopped the use of loudspeakers, only to resume in 2010 after another North Korean provocation. More recently, South Korea suspended the use of loudspeakers in 2015, but went back to using them one year later. This week, South Korean President Moon Jae-in went ahead and stopped all propaganda broadcast till further notice as a confidence-building measure ahead of the third inter-Korean summit on 27 April. The demilitarized zone behind me is 250 kilometers wide, cuts across the Korean peninsula, and it has, it's about four kilometers uh, you know, in, in, in width, uh, two kilometers on this side of the border in South Korea and two kilometers on the other side of the border inside North Korea. Uh, now, one of the items on the agenda of the meeting on 27th will be uh, pulling back on the military guard posts that are erected all across the 250 kilometer long DMZ. Uh, including pulling back of the artillery from the four-kilometer stretch where, the st where soldiers from both sides stand eyeball to eyeball uh, all along the DMZ. So that's one of the agenda items of the talks which will take place here uh, at Panmum Jong village inside the DMZ on the 27th when Kim Jong-un will become the first North Korean leader in history to cross the military demarcation line and enter South Korea for talks with Moon Jae-in of South Korea in Panmum Jong village inside the DMZ. At the Dora Observatory, again inside the demilitarized zone, binoculars are available to catch a glimpse into life inside communist North Korea. After crossing the Bridge of Unification, I've arrived at the Dora Observatory, which is barely a few meters inside the border that separates South Korea from North Korea. And uh, about four kilometers from this Dora Observatory lies the village of Pan Munjom, which will be the venue of the inter-Korean summit, only the third of its kind, to be held on Friday between Moon Jae-in of South Korea and Kim Jong-un of North Korea. And the expectation here is that uh, there will be a meeting of minds more than anything else and will pave the way for future dialogue and peace and security between the two Koreas. I'm Ramesh Ramachandran reporting for Vion at the Dora Observatory in the demilitarized zone separating South Korea from North Korea.